Hi, welcome to Todd Fun. Today's fun, a grandfather clock. Yes, I bought a 1970s, mid-1970s grandfather's clock. I was at an, um, an auction in North Scottsdale, Arizona. It was a estate sale. Someone had passed away and the family was selling everything at the auction. Uh, and I was uh, very interested in this mid-1970s uh, Howard Miller grandfather clock. And I did win it. Um, it, uh, it was not functioning and apparently had not been functioning for many, many years, which is a good thing because that means it's not wore out. Um, and already I kind of got into it and kind of going, hmm, yeah, this is fixable. So, uh, lucky me. It's got, the, it's got the beveled glass on the sides and front. Right now it is all cleaned up and I have put some wax on it and the wax is drying because this is what you would call fine wood. It's a Howard Millard uh, made, the actual cabinet is made in Michigan, uh, Zeeland, Michigan. Um, I contacted Howard Miller uh, based on the serial number and they said yes this is a, about a mid 1970s clock and uh, I've got all the uh, I've got all the innards out. It would have the uh, pendulum in here as well as gongs. This is a gong clock, not the, not the, not the chime bells, or not the chime bars. Um, it actually has gongs, like four foot long uh, tuned uh, tubular pipe gongs hang behind the pendulum. We'll see that later once I get it back all together. Right now I'm just showing you the, the project in hand. It's a very Beautiful wood, uh, beautiful clock with great cabinet work. Um, Howard Miller is still in business. They uh, unfortunately they don't make as good a cabinets as this anymore. Um, and, but the clocks mechanisms are still made in Germany. So um, if you buy a more expensive Howard Miller, uh, like in the multiple thousands range, you'll get good cabinet work. Uh, the feet were gone. Someone had removed them, so I, those actually could get still. So I ordered those and put those on. Uh, there's a uh, little side grates here. Those are these. And they're all waxed right now, so that's why the wax is drying. I currently put on, this is the type of wood you have to wax. So this is a uh, min wax. Um, you put it on, let it dry for 15 minutes, and then buff it all off. This is a service manual I actually ordered from Hermel, I guess H E R M L E, Hermeli? Hermeli? Oh, well, someone can tell me how to pronounce it. I contacted them because they are the maker of the clock mechanism in Germany. This is stamped made in Germany and this, um, this, this company is the company that sells the service manual for these clocks. They're still in business, they still make clocks, you can still buy parts. Unfortunately this clock, though everything in here is still um, produced, this is a gong clock, essentially tubular tube, tube chimes. You know, I wasn't able to find parts for that, so I'm glad that all still works. And this is what holds the gongs. This actually bolts into the back. And the gongs, which you'll see once I get them back up and functioning, hang off of these from strings. And they're really long. So we'll put that away. And now, this is the clockwork mechanism itself that's stamped made in Germany made for Howard Miller because it actually says so um, these are the uh, this is the uh, Westminster chime pattern this is a single a single um, melody clock some are some are multiple but back in the 1970s they were single chime single melody and that was the Westminster <laughs> I can't say it. Westminster chime well, you're pretty typical gong gong, you know, every quarter hour it gongs, and then on the hour it, it goes bong 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 for the number of hours it is, which you can turn off, of course. Um, it's a very fine clock, and I was looking at all of the pivot points, which are the points that wear out, if not cleaned and greased every uh, two to four years. Um, but it does not look like this has at all have any wear. So... That's interesting because not having wear means I don't have anything to fix other than just to get it working again. I'm thinking it's uh, I'm thinking they just had something a, a tweaked a little bit, and hopefully it'll it'll I'll get it cleaned up a little bit, and I'll get these all these pivot points and areas that need grease. There's a couple slide points that need grease, um, but that's all in the service manual. Um, I got the service manual. It totally covers how to service and clean 
and even order parts. So, and I've already read it, and it's really not as complicated as I was thinking. Um, they're very fine quality clocks, but they're not that difficult really. I'll build a, a jig to mount this on for servicing and testing. But it's fun, and so I don't know how much my audience wants to follow along on this. Uh, if you want a lot, well then maybe I'll film a bit more, otherwise I'm just going to get it working on a stand and maybe film that, and then come back to, uh, to uh, show it in the living room working. Um, it is a moon dial clock, which means it shows you the face of the moon, and of course it, it, it doesn't have the Roman numerals, it has the Arabic numbers. That's usually something you can custom order as an owner. You, you specify what you want for the face, and these faces are replaceable. You can still order these faces. There's a little clockwork in the back to handle the, the moon. So that's, that's simple enough, I guess. Uh, paperwork. Uh, these are the chains because it is weight driven. It's a weight driven pendulum clock. And the chains, all this is cleaned up already. The only thing that's not cleaned up and serviced is that. And this just, the only thing left on this is wax and clean the glass. Or buff the wax out, clean the glass, and that's done. So paperwork, this is uh, just a generic Howard Miller manual uh, along with uh, oh, order your fancy plaque which it does have one. Um, I'm not sure this is the original owner but this was in the clock and it is dated um, 1970s but this clock serial number only goes back to like mid 70s. Uh, so what I'm thinking this is, is this person um, and like I said, I got this in Scottsdale, so why this was in there, maybe that's where he moved from. I don't, I don't know, but this was in the bottom of the clock. And what's in here, though, is just, uh, it's just the uh, schematics on how to build a cabinet. And not even this cabinet. Uh, more like a cabinet like this. Uh, I don't know if that was just something that came with the clock or something, or what. Or the guy was thinking about making one and then decided, no, I'll, I got money, I'll just buy one. <laughs> maybe that's what he was thinking, I don't know. But this picture of this little girl was in the clock, so if anyone wants to research, I couldn't find this person for nothing, but if anyone wants to research that and maybe throw this up on Facebook and say, hey, you know, maybe this little girl would like her picture back. Um, there's no other information on it. Um, on the back it just talks about wanting to, to crop the hair and make it look better, so apparently this was going out to be the going out to be reworked, but not not interesting to the clock at all. I will upload a a JPEG of this. Um, uh, so if someone wants to link to that in the show notes and at toddfun.com, in case someone does want to help find this person and get their picture back. And this is the specialty oil that I ordered, Liberty Oil. It's specifically for oiling these little, putting a little just a little bit of grease on each of those pivot points and some of the teeth. And then there's another grease. This is oil. There's a grease that goes on some slide points, but I'm just going to use white lithium grease for those one point. There's only one point in this clock that needs grease. The rest is, is this specialty oil. It's essentially a high quality, clean synthetic. But you get it on Amazon. So if you have a grandfather's clock, there'll be a link to this at my Amazon store from toddfun.com. Uh, this one's got the long needle, so it took me a while to find one with a long needle. I'm just going to uh, finish buffing it out and uh, service this mechanism on a stand. Make sure it runs time because there's certain things you can do per the manual. The manual tells you how to get the clock working correctly, to get the time and get the beats right, um, and, you know, based on the pendulum, get the pendulum set correctly. And I will do all that on a bracket. I'll actually probably weld up a bracket that will sit on my on my welding bench. That's what this is, my welding bench. And then I'll be able to have it out in the garage just swinging free where I can service and, and, and clean it and, and make sure everything's tweaked. And then when I put it all in, inside of here, then we'll show it again. So there are probably two more videos. One of it just, uh, of this just sort of maybe worked on a little bit, maybe working. And then one of it actually upright and functioning and listening. So if you think that's fun, let me know. If not, well, hey, it's Todd fun. So it's just got to be fun for me. Thanks for joining. Well, I'm not so sure this shows up on camera, but that's about four hours of hand waxing and hand buffing the wax all the way across. It's uh, it's very much different. It's very glossy, shiny, clean, 
um, I redid the glass, recleaned the glass. So yeah, I'm not so sure the camera picks up how I like the way they folded this veneer in four different ways. They did that on all the panels. Uh, it's just a gorgeous clock. It, I did measure it. It is seven foot four inches. So it's 88 inches high. That is quite a tall clock. Haven't heard it yet because I haven't got it working. But I have a feeling if it all works good, it's going to sound amazing.